Okay, Mark is continuing to read The Holy Spirit by Arthur Pink. He's finishing out today, Chapter 8, and then we'll go into Chapter 9 tomorrow. It's well known to some of our readers during the last generation, many earnest souls have been deeply exercised by what is known as the Pentecostal movement. The question is frequently raised as to whether or not the strange power displayed in their meetings issuing in unintelligible sounds called tongues, the genuine gift of the Spirit. Those who have joined the movement, some of them godly souls, we believe, insist that not only is the gift genuine, but is the duty of all Christians to seek the same, but surely such seemed to overlook the fact that it was not any unknown tongue which was spoken by the apostles, foreigners who heard them, had no difficulty understanding what was said, Acts 2.8. If what has just been said be not sufficient, then let our appeal be unto Second Timothy 3.16-17. God has now fully revealed his mind to us, all that we need to thoroughly furnish us and all good works is already in our hands. The person the writer would not take the trouble to walk into the next room to hear any person deliver a message which he claims was inspired by the Holy Spirit. He's completed scriptures in our possession, a few more is required except the Spirit to interpret and apply them. Also be duly observed that there is not a single exhortation on the epistles of the New Testament that the saints should seek a fresh Pentecost, though not even to the carnal Corinthians of the legal relations. The sample what was believed by the early fathers would quote the following Augustine saith Miracles were once necessary to make the world believe the gospel. He who now seeks a sign that he may believe is a wonder, yea, a monster, Christian, concludes upon the same grounds that there is now in the church no necessity of working miracles and calls in the false prophet who now takes in hand to work them from W. Perkins 1604 and Acts 216. We find Peter was moved by God to give a general explanation of the great wonders which had just taken place, Jerusalem was at this time the feast, filled with a great concourse of people. The sudden sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind filling the house where the apostles were gathered together soon drew there thither a multitude of people, and as they had wondered and heard the apostles speak in their own very languages, they asked, What meaneth this? Acts 2.12. Peter then declared, This is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. The prophet given by Joel 2.28-32 now began to receive his fulfillment, the latter part of which we believe is to be understood symbolically. What is the bearing of all this upon us today? We will reply in a single sentence. The advent of the Spirit followed the exaltation of Christ. If then we desire to enjoy more of the Spirit's power, in blessing, we must give Christ the throne of our hearts and crown Him the Lord of our lives. Having dwelt upon the doctrine on dispensational aspects of our subject, next we hope to take the prize for mental bearings of it. Next time, chapter 9, work of the Spirit. Thank you, Mark. We'll continue in this tomorrow, Chapter 9.